Hey guys, Blue Collar Ben here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be going over thermostat wiring and just kind of the essential things that you need to know. And we're going to do this as quick as possible just to kind of give you a general grasp on what's going on with the thermostat wiring for a traditional one heat, one cool system. So here's our layout with our main panel, which is our main power that is supplying um, both of our appliances here. And then we have our furnace, as well as our air conditioner, as well as our thermostat. Those are our primary things. So we'll start off by just talking about the main voltages. Uh, your typical outside condensing unit or air conditioner is gonna be supplied by 240 volts. That comes from a double pole breaker. And this is what a double pole breaker looks like. You can see how this is occupying two spaces instead of just one. And the reason it's doing that is it's pulling off of the two legs of power. You can see there's two legs of power coming in the top right there. And this would come down and through a disconnect, which is mounted on the side of the house, that you can either turn a breaker off or pull a disconnect out. And that comes in and connects onto the contactor. Okay, now we'll go to the furnace side here. Uh, typically, if it's a gas furnace, it's gonna be 120 volts, so it's gonna be a single pole breaker. You'll still have multiple wires though, because one will be the neutral and one will be hot. Whereas with the air conditioner, you have two hot wires of 120 volts each. And right here is a single pole breaker feeding the furnace. And it just has one wire coming out, that's 120 volts. And then the second wire, which is the white one, is tied in up here. You can see number six, I've got tied in right there into the neutral bus. And that's the return path for the current so that it can utilize that 120 volts. Note that if you have an electric furnace or possibly a, just an air handler, a lot of times those are 240 volts. So you would be looking for a double pole breaker in that case, feeding your air handler or electric furnace. Here's our 120 volt circuit coming down to the furnace. And a lot of the times you'll have just a regular old switch on the side of the furnace that you can turn on or off. So everything really starts at the furnace as far as the control power, which is what we want to talk about mainly, uh, as in the thermostat wiring. Our wires are color coded and this is typical, but not guaranteed. So R is red, G is green, Y is yellow, W is white, and common is typically blue, but sometimes can be black. Our 120 volts comes into the furnace transformer, which is right here on my diagram which transforms it down to 24 volts, which then goes onto the control board. And right here is that transformer, and you can see how we have 120 volts coming in here on the top. This is the primary side of the transformer, so 120 volts in our common, and then coming out of the bottom of it, we have our 24 volts, which then goes onto the control board through this Molex plug. The control board then has several terminals that connect to the thermostat wires. Those are typically R, W, G, C, and Y. And here are where all of our thermostat wires attach on the control board. We have our larger wire, which is coming from the thermostat upstairs. And so we have our common, our G for the fan, our R is for the 24 volts going up to the thermostat, the W is for heating, and the Y is for air conditioning. So the air conditioning signal comes down on this Y wire from the thermostat and then it's uh, carried out to the air conditioner outside via this two wire here. And typically it's red and white and it doesn't really matter which one goes on the common or the Y. Uh, either way is totally fine. R is the wire that carries 24 volts of power coming straight off of the control board. So that R comes up to the thermostat. So the thermostat has uh, the R as basically the resource of 24 volts, which it can then use to do different things. So we'll go through those things one at a time. Really quickly though, we'll talk about the R and the RC. The RC terminal is uh, present on, a, on most thermostats still, even though I've only seen it used, I think one time in the 10 years that I've been working as an HVAC tech. Most thermostats will have a jumper wire installed from the R to the RC. The reason that there's an RC terminal is that there used to be a second transformer, just like this one right here, except for it was out in the air conditioner because it had its own separate low voltage system, which is why there had to be a separate terminal. Since almost no air conditioners have that anymore, uh, the RC t is just jumpered to the R. So now the thermostat can decide to do different things with that 24 volts of power. If the thermostat wants to turn on the heating, it will jump from the R to the W. R to the W is a call for heat. 
Therefore, if you were to jumper out from the R to the W down on the furnace control board with just a pair of alligator clips, you could make the furnace come on in heating mode. This is sometimes used in troubleshooting. Instead of putting the R to the W, we put the R just to the G. The G is for the fan. And so that will bring on your furnace fan. Well, now what about R to C? If we were to jumper R to C, unfortunately, that'd be a very bad thing because that would create a direct short and you'd be shorting out that 24 volt circuit and a little fuse located down on the control board would pop. That's why whenever you work on your thermostat or air conditioner, you want to also turn off the power to the furnace so that you don't have any 24 volts because if you short out uh, the R to the common, then it will pop a little, I think it's typically three or five amp fuse on the control board. No big deal, you can replace that if you need to. Right here you can see we have that little three amp fuse. If anything had shorted out in the system, uh, you would be able to pull this out. And by looking at it here, we can see that this one is not blown, so we're good to go. You can go back with up to a five amp fuse, I do believe, uh, but a uh, going back with the 3 amp is best if at all possible. Also my thumbnail is not that long, it just got partially ripped off so it looks like it's that long. The idea with the common here is it's doing the same thing as the neutral wire does for the main circuit here. So we have a 120 volt circuit, right? So there's 120 volts on this wire right there and then this is representing the neutral wire. Well that 120 volts only works if that, if that 120 volts has a return path. So even though the neutral technically doesn't really have voltage on it unless it's being used, it has to have that neutral so that it can use the 120 volts. The same thing with the R and the C. That's why some digital thermostats require that you have a common wire because a thermostat needs to use power from that 24 volts. But the W, G, and Y are just control terminals and it can't apply power to those. Some digital thermostats can use a feature called power stealing where it applies a tiny bit of voltage from the R to the W to the G to the Y. Um, but not enough for the control board to realize what's going on. Um, but we're not going to go into detail on that. But generally speaking, R to the C, uh, the thermostat can be powered from that. Finally, we have the Y terminal, which is for air conditioning. Now, when the thermostat applies power from the R to the Y, then that would bring on the outdoor condensing unit, but we also need the furnace fan to run. We already know that the G is the fan terminal, so during a call for cooling, the thermostat will apply power from the R to the Y and the R to the G at the same time, bringing the furnace fan on and the outside unit on. Now remember how the thermostat uses power uh, by utilizing the common wire? Well, the outside contactor for the air conditioner needs to do the same thing. So you can see down here with our common wire, it is jumping down here and coming over to one side of the contactor. The contactor has an electromagnetic a 24 volt coil that pulls that contactor in. So on one side we have that common wire connecting directly to it and on the other side we have that Y terminal. Over here you can see we have our thermostat wires coming into the air conditioner which then attach to these this brown and blue wire which go onto the contactor itself. This is the 24 volt control voltage coming from the thermostat. This is more typical for the thermostat wires to attach one on either side of the contactor like that instead of the existing one which just has them both coming in on one side. Now the Y wire comes all the way down and connects onto the furnace and then that Y wire comes from the air conditioner and hooks onto that exact same terminal. Now it used to be that, that Y terminal was technically a dummy terminal in that it didn't really do anything on the furnace other than to provide a place for those two wires to be tied together. But on modern furnaces, typically that is not the case anymore. It is important that you connect the Y wire and this is why. <laughs> when the thermostat calls from the R to the G, that brings on the fan like we talked about before. But if it's only a call from the R to the G and nothing else, then the furnace will typically run at a slower speed in order to just circulate the air through the house without blowing it at high volumes. So if the thermostat sends a call from the R to the Y, and the R to the G, um, but the Y terminal is not connected down here because you could theoretically tie them together back here further, uh, which you do still see sometimes. You'll see the Y wire tied together further up above the furnace instead of coming down to here. What will happen is the furnace will run at that slower speed and the air conditioner will run and it will work unless it's too slow of airflow and your 
your air conditioner will either operate inefficiently or eventually it will freeze up the A-coil, which typically sits right above the furnace. So that is why you need to land the Y on the Y on the furnace. <laughs> If these Y wires were not connected to the Y terminal, you would just look around and see where the thermostat wires come in and if they're tied together somewhere up by the ceiling. So that covers the basics of thermostat wiring. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, if you want to keep learning about HVAC topics and troubleshooting, click on this playlist right here and I'll see you over there in just a few seconds.